Teams are announcing their 2020 car launches earlier than ever. We take a look at Formula One's official 2019 attendance report. And we check in with Formula 3 and Formula 2 for some noteworthy movement in the driver market. I'm your host, Cranky Yankee F1. Welcome to Formula One Friday. We're going to talk about all that and then some. Let's get into it. As many of you know, winter testing is set to begin on the 19th of February, and then actually it picks back up a week later on the 26th of February. We're already starting to see some car launches starting to roll in, and Ferrari earlier than last year has reported, as has Alpha Tori, which is weird to call them that, but officially, the Alpha Tori Formula One team will be officially announcing and showcasing their 2020 Formula One car on Valentine's Day. That is February 14th, 2020. As each new car is launched, I'll obviously be covering that and making a video about it accordingly, but mark your calendar, AlphaTauri will be on February 14th, 2020. And not to be outdone, Mattia Bonotto has confirmed that the Ferrari car will be announcing three days earlier on February 11th. So just within a couple of days within each other, we'll see everything there is about the 2020 vehicles between those two teams. What's also striking is to see Mattia's rhetoric as he made this announcement, as he was quoted as saying, we cannot be the favorites for 2020. The ones that won the championship this year, aka Mercedes, the ones that won the last six titles are setting the bar and are having the fastest car by the end of the season. So we are the challenger. That's where we are positioning ourselves. And usually what the teams will do and the team bosses will do, they'll come out and, you know, they'll have obviously things played close to the chest. But I've never actually seen Mattia be this bearish going into a season. And he's setting expectations, which is likely wise considering the year they had. He probably wants to keep the expectations a little bit lower so that they can exceed them because this year was tough for them. That's undeniably true. But this seemed out of character for Ferrari. So this was the first full season for Mattia. And this just may be how he handles the media and the press leading up to the car launches. But we will keep an eye on that to see how his rhetoric changes, if it changes and how Ferrari feel like they're going to go into the car launch and then to winter testing. So with Ferrari and Alfa Tori announced, check, check. In an interview this week with Red Bull's internal media team, Service TV, he was quoted as saying, we don't have any excuses for next year. For the first time, we are 14 days ahead of our normal schedule. We're going into the new year better than ever and with a great concept. Now we finally have to deliver. Based on what we've seen come out of Milton Keynes this winter, it's likely that the performance updates and developments that we saw, especially that were there after Austria, they seem to be here to stay. And the form that Verstappen in particular was on, and Albon obviously was able to deliver once he was comfortably in the seat. Every Red Bull fan, as it seems, should be pretty ecstatic about this news, and it seems Honda is directly on target with their aggressive development schedule, in particular with their aerodynamic schedule. Now there's continued to work on the power unit, Should there be any more announcements about that, I'll make sure to let you know. So now that we've talked about 2020 and what to expect, we can take a look back at 2019, or at least look at what Formula One is saying about their 2019. If you had to guess, did Formula One increase attendance? One would hope that the answer should be yes. In Formula One reports, just a 1.75 increase. That number comes to 4,164,948 attendees of at least one Grand Prix throughout the 21 and the 2019 season. 1.75 increase is marginal. It's certainly not significantly different as it relates to the change year over year. The one thing that hurt them in 2018 as we look back, while they did report the revenues up 44 million, their operating loss had actually significantly increased from 37 million to 68 million. And all of these things rolled into 2019. Now we see the growth in 2019 and it's reasonably underwhelming. And while that's, yes, live in-person attendance, but it seems pretty reasonable to think that that has some form of correlation to how the sport is perceived and growth of the sport itself in terms of its popularity. And really the argument can't be the fact that F1 TV has grown, therefore it has offset and compensated for that potential lack of growth. We should have probably seen more than 1.75% considering all of the investments and the activities going on. Last, but certainly not least, we talk about the development changes in terms of the lower formula drivers and the development roles who have come on board in terms of the 2020 teams. And we start with Williams, which is great news for them. They've filled the role. Dan Tictum, who is going to be in Formula 2 this year, he'll have the Williams logo on his overalls. 
Similar to Latifi last year in 2019, we'll see Tictum at some of the Grand Prix joining Williams. It's not actually announced yet whether he'll actually be driving, but he'll certainly be in the paddock and in the garage. So his face will be out there. So don't be surprised if you see a new face around the Williams garage. It is likely Dan Tictum, who interestingly enough was dropped by Red Bull in 2019. So picked up a nice role for himself and likely has a decent trajectory into Formula One. So congrats to him and to Williams. Speaking of development drivers, and I'm super excited to talk about this as the American in the room, and especially because we just made some content about why we don't see Americans in Formula One today. It has been announced that the recent podium score at the Macau Grand Prix, the young American has been confirmed at Prema Power Team. So he'll be out, he'll be leaving Carlin in 2020 to race with the Italian powerhouse. And in 2019, he was middle of the road in terms of just where he was pure net placed. The Macau Grand Prix is just an entirely different beast all on its own. It's typically one of those things used as a way to understand someone's potential in Formula One. So earning a podium at Macau is really important for a driver's development, for their confidence, and for their overall ability to have options in Formula One. It's especially exciting because Prima has such a good track record of getting their drivers into a Formula One seat, likely due to the links they share between Mercedes and Ferrari. It's just really good to see in some examples of current drivers. You have Charles Leclerc, you have Pierre Gasly, Antonio Giovinazzi, and Lance Stroll. So all big names, all current drivers, and it's just really good news for Logan Sargent. Best of luck to him. Look out for that, and congrats to the American. But that wraps it for this week's Formula One news. There's obviously plenty more to go around. Make sure to check out the channel, and if you have any requests for any more information, some content, let me know below. If you want me to keep doing this, Let me know and I will do it every single Friday. I promise you every single Friday morning you'll have the video. I will see you next Friday. I'm your host, Cranky Yankee F1. Thanks again. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for checking this out and hopefully you felt entertained. I am the editor, Cranky Yankee F1. Not so cranky in the offseason, better known as Nick around these parts, but I have two more videos for you. You got one more choice left, maybe two more videos. Which one? They're both good. I don't know. The choice is yours. I'll see you soon, hopefully. Hopefully.